Hello everyone, we greet you all those that are tuned in to the UFOCOM radio, our dear followers, subscribers and viewers. We greet you all and we hope you are doing just fine. It's time for the program, Youth Perspective. And in this program we get to hear of the thoughts that come straight from the teenagers themselves. And today I'm so lucky, I'm blessed that I have two ladies in the house with me. I have Joanne. Joanne, say hello to our viewers and followers. Hello, our viewers and listeners. We welcome you to this program, The Teens Perspectives. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Joanne. And uh, Maria, please say hello. Hello, our friends. My name is Tasaira Maria from Youth for Charity Missions International. Thank you for viewing us and listening to our programs. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much for following us. It's the youth perspective, or you could call it the teenager's perspective. We get to share our mindsets, what we feel like, what it means to be a teenager, what it is like to walk in the shoes of a teenager. And today we have an interesting topic. But before I can mention it to you, I hear I'm Rachel and yes, I'm the host of the program. Please be blessed as you listen in. We are going to share out on things that are vital. We are going to share on a, a debate. We have a debate in the house and we have been wondering right now as people are coming out, politicians are out for politics here and there. The economy is quite tight. People are wondering what next for our teenagers, what next for the people who are attending school. This goes beyond. It's not only teenagers, but of course all those that are institutions of higher learning those that are in primary, elementary level, we are wondering what next for them. As the lockdown is going on in extension, it started by a week, then we went to months, and now we are home. We are about to close the year, but people are still in lockdown. Of course, there are other places where the lockdown has been eased and others have not yet. There are those that are already back to school. Yeah, there are some places where school is on. When we take an example and we look at the, uh, the Ivory Coast in, Kot, in Abidjan, that place, they already... Uh, pupils are already back to school and they have their masks on but then here in Uganda it's not the case we are still home uh, apart from a few things that have been adjusted for school we are still home and this is biting this has affected them we are get we are going to get to here uh, what is it like should we go back to school or should we not go back to school? So remember, the debate is two-sided. We are going to see what it means like. I'm going to get to know from Maria and from Joe, and what do they think? Should they reopen schools and they go back to study? Of course, they are going through stress. They are going through trauma. Uh, there are things that they are not receiving that they were receiving in school. There is that, that, that bond that is no longer there. And remember, even at home, of course, there are still other things that they are going through. But at school, uh, at school, there are things still that they go through. So we want to know, do they suggest that they open back schools and they go or they should stay back home? As for us here in Uganda, we are still in the lockdown. So let me start with Maria to kickstart off our show today. Remember, it's a debate and we are talking two sides, but we are going to start with a major one. And we are saying schools should open. Let's get to know why do you think schools should open? Maria, do you go to school? Yeah, I used to go at school before the lockdown. You used to go to school. Don't you miss your school? I miss school. <laughs> of course, the feeling is everywhere. They get to miss school. So let us know, Maria. Schools should open. Now, of course, we are not just advocating for it. We have heard people say that. There are ministers who are coming out and saying out that very thing. There are other parents who are also saying they should open up schools since there are other places where schools are open already. Or they are saying schools are going to open, but then they need to be having a mask they need to be having temperature guns so let's get to know Maria schools should open yes why schools should open mm -hmm. because children if they are at home yeah. there are many things which they disturb them because if you are school you are protected by teachers even mm -hmm. your fellow friends yeah. but schools should open but if those schools open there should be sanitizers the school should be able to provide sanitizers, mm. soap, water for using it everywhere in the compound, in bathrooms, everywhere mm. where they see that children can manage to get that water, not hiding it, mm. but when it, everyone can see. Because all of us, even though they see us, 
children are young, but they understand also. If they explain to them, they understand that we have gone at school, yeah. but it's time we are still in lockdown. Mm -hmm. co the COVID-19 is still, still there. there. They, are, Good. they are able to manage. So, mm. so the school should provide sanitizers, soap, mm. water, and each and everything to see that uh, they should start school. And uh, even at the gate before children they enter, there should be the temperature can to yeah. check every day the children from their homes yeah. because if they come to school we don't know whether they come in cars mm -hmm. or or buses or motorcycles so there should be all those equipments in order to stay safe yeah remember covid 19 the virus spreads through surfaces if mm -hmm. at all someone is infected and they touch a surface area you come and touch it as well you don't wash your hands then Mm, at the end of the day, you are infected. So I side with Maria. If schools are to open, then that should be in place. Of course, from the example that I told you about uh, in, in Cote d'Ivoire, where schools are open, we saw a photo and all the children were having masks on. So that is what you are saying. They should open, but then those should be in place. Yes. And this and is not only for primary. Yes. All people who are going to school. And another thing mm. is, it's a source of employment yeah. to teachers. As we have seen, many teachers are coming out saying that we don't have anything we used to teach now, mm. we don't have money, we have loans, mm. we lack each and everything. When they want the president to open the schools in order that to earn a living, a living. because they used Good. to get money from schools. Mm. Now, the teachers also, they need... To eat as uh, we are people, we need to eat. Mm -hmm. Even basic needs are many. They have their families, so mm -hmm. they they say that schools should open. And even me, at another side, schools should open because teachers mm -hmm. they started for being a teacher. They costed a lot of money when yeah. they know that their future should be bright. Actually, they are teachers, Maria, around my area where I come from. There are people whom we know that they are teachers, and I can tell you one thing. There is one of one I know a gentleman, right? now he is roasting sausages just alongside the road and people say that man is a teacher that man used to teach somewhere then there's also another one that I know she's also making chips chips and chicken of course we cannot crucify them and say how can you be a teacher and right now you're doing this it's because their uh, their earnings have been distorted they are not getting money they are not on the payroll anymore because you cannot be paid when you're not teaching people so if schools are to open they should also have that in mind that of course remember um, uh, the, 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 the parents some of them who have been teachers have not been earning yes. and apparently they are now finding ways they are doing other things and then there are others who don't even have capital to come up with a business, yes. that one is at home. And another one mm. is, at school we used to learn many things. Yeah. At school, like me at my school, they used to teach us sexual reproductive, healthy rights, education. Good. So we we stayed counseled at school when yeah. we know they counsel us that this is good, this is bad. But now children mm. are lacking those edu that education mm. because now they... They are at home, no one to teach them, others, their parents, they fear to, to tell talk them. about it, yes. <laughs> but now at school, teachers are free, they can talk each and everything. Now children, they pick that this is good and this mm. is bad. But now during the lockdown, others are in, even in villages, others at home, True. no one to counsel them. And it has caused a lot of problems. So you mean you have programs where they get to teach you about sexual and reproductive health yes. rights in school? Mm. Do you study it like a subject also? No, uh, me at my school, mm -hmm. we used to study it every Friday after lunch. Interesting. When we are used that after lunch, we have those lessons. Okay, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. They used to have sexual and reproductive health rights education. And you find that right now in the lockdown, mm -hmm. they are parents who, are, who, who shun away from such things. Maybe they may not teach you on what to do and what not. They may not talk to you openly about reproduction. But if it's a school, mm -hmm. we know that at least they meet that in their way. Just and have you ever had a sexual and reproductive health rights education? Yes, when I was still in my high school, mm. we also used to have those educations yeah. yes, on Saturdays, mm. on weekends. They used to take us, it was like counseling. Mm. They talk about those things. Yeah. 
and right now it's nowhere yes. and we cannot say they are they are broadcasting it on TV because even on TV we don't see that we mm. see talk shows and on TV we see people who, uh, who are just speaking about advocacy for some other things yes. but there is that specific education that you are lacking out on yes. during this time of covid that's why we always urge parents to use this time use this time let it be like a blessing in this guys i must say use this time to talk to the teenagers talk to them yes please continue and my last point yeah. is repetition of classes mm. because during this time of covid-19 mm. as as children many of us we are worried saying when are we going at school mm. oh we are going to repeat classes because yeah. even our parents mm. they made a lot of loss mm. because they had planned that my child is going to be a candidate my yeah. child is going in another class now for example if a child was going in senior one or is when is a candidate yeah. now we are on probability of doing exams you need or not mm. now everyone is praying and we were saying that eh, this year or next year I'm going in another class yeah. now we don't know whether we are repeating or we are continuing you with are the actually this confused yeah we are confused <laughs> wow it, it, that is all the those are all the impacts of covid-19 on our teenagers actually there is a, a lift to pick one or two or even three there are many things they are not certain so maria let's take an example which cl- which class are you me i was in senior one you were in senior one yes. apparently you don't know whether you are going to senior two yes. or you're remaining in senior one and, and i wanted a lot to go in senior two but now <laughs> I you want to go to senior two you want to know what it feels like you at what if they say just go to senior two is it fine with you is it okay or you feel like there are some things that you lack out on Although it is okay mm. but uh, there are many things which we are going to miss if mm. they do that because we had just started the started the yeah, year yeah. now mm. we we didn't study a lot of things so it can be somehow difficult to go in senior two that's beautiful thank you so much so there is that that feeling of i might repeat i'm not even certain of my education now because let me say maria you are to stay in senior one there are those who are in p7 candidates and for them they have to go to the next class and it's not like you promote them easily for them they need transcripts so they transcripts they need they need pass slips yes. yes they need pass slips and certificates to show things that are recognized worldwide a, a document that you represent tomorrow even if you go to another curriculum or another country and you say i finished my primary 7 and that they cannot provide mm-hmm. at least they can say senior one go to senior 2 mm-hmm. senior 3 go to senior 4 but senior 4 cannot cross over like a person who is in senior six mm-hmm. and they need to do their their education for living that, that that whole that whole study to go to the university they need to present a transcript you cannot tell joan since joan is in primary sorry since joan is in secondary and she's in senior six to just go to campus or university mm-hmm. there are uh, documents that you need it's mm-hmm. beautiful we are having a great time here and we are talking should schools should schools open or should they not open it's more of, more of a debate mm-hmm. and we are getting to here on the other side of schools should open if they are to open they should be mindful of this mm-hmm. maria just told us that we must know that they they need for having um, the protective gears and there we have masks we have a, a gun a person should stand at the gate and they make sure they check your temperature to see whether it has risen up it's abnormal or it's the normal one or it's just fine and then also we need to have sanitizers and water access to washing facilities remember the the virus goes through surfaces that's why we are washing our hands each and every time we are trying to fight it we are trying to keep it or let, we are also going to talk the other side of whether we should open or not we are going to get to hear from from the very teenagers in the house right now we are going straight to joan joan schools should open please continue to add on what maria has said yeah. schools should open yeah. because children are idle involving in immoral act- acti- activities yes you can find a, a child let me say boy mm. with a bad peer group because he is idle a girl getting pregnant mm. girl getting married because they are idle mm. but at school we used to be in a, a safe place because yeah. some parents they don't take care of these parents mm. these children. The children they leave the children to work from morning to evening even mm. don't know how is my child you what you do just providing food but you don't know where this child has been working yeah. from yeah. so schools should open mm. to to make sure that at least that 
children they can be in a safe place yeah and then you'll be busy yes. right now you are idle and you're at home i hope yes. you don't move around no, loitering we, we, we <laughs> okay you have strict mm. uh, rules and regulations yes. at home mm. remember when children are at home mm. they are some some of them of course not all mm. some of them are idle to the extent that they are using yes. the internet they are searching for things that are not even yeah. helpful mm. sometimes they fall prone to pornographic uh, things over the internet mm. they are involving in vices that do not help them at all Yes. So at least if you're at school you know you're busy it's mm-hmm. prep time mm-hmm. or you're doing your assignments yes. or you're in class and you're reading right yes yes please and the second thing is if schools are to open mm. let them open for these candidates because you know if you know that now I'm going or I'm I'm from primary yeah. I'm going to secondary I'm from O level I'm going to A level mm. it will be very difficult for you to to tell you that you are having a dead year yeah. at least schools should open for these candidates because now they can't say that you are in senior for let you go in form 5 yes, it's yes. very difficult because you have to be with that person mm. it's very difficult so if schools are to open let mm. them open for these candidates yeah. because it is not very easy to mm. have a dead year yet you knew that this is now because some children we are some of them we are going to stop in senior four mm. and others are we are going to stop maybe in senior six and yeah. they join other things they do But, yes, institutions institutions okay. but it will be very difficult mm. again to add on you another year in mm. front of you that because of covid-19 yeah. so they should open for those candidates but because at least if you are in senior two mm. you can at least join senior three without because they will not ask you for anything they will not it's but, not as tight yes mm. but candidates you can't go in another class when you're a candidate and mm. they don't ask you for that pass slip actually that has reminded me there was a time mm. uh, uh, the, the minister for education and sports mm. that is the first lady her excellence janet kataha mm. she was on tv and she was giving us the scope of education whether education should resume mm. or not yes. and in that process they also gave uh, the uh, they asked other people in the house to also speak what do they think mm. what must be done and what must they not do i remember during that time there were other ministers who came up and also said and other all other other prominent leaders they were saying they should open schools only for candidates mm. just like you have said there are people who are doing uh, primary 7 they need to have that transcript that shows this is primary living examination mm. certificate yes. so you can use it anywhere if you change a state if you change a country you can still use it yes. but in a case whereby we are not sure whether you even performed well or not mm. it is too tight and remember you've paid your fees already mm. at least for senior and senior to continuing classes mm. they can shift to the next classes yes. but i don't know how they concluded but it was a talk everywhere they were saying they will only open for candidate classes i don't know if top class is also at candidate class yeah. because they are also at the verge we are mm. not sure where they are going to primary mm. or they have to stay there please continue mm. joan And another thing is mm. schools should open I'm still on that thing because mm. there are some children or let me say international schools mm. children are still learning and these um, these bo- these uh, children who are not in international schools yeah. they are there and some of they are not studying and some of them mm. it is very difficult for them to get this study materials so they are lagging behind yeah. they would say that candidates are going to do their exams mm. but remember that these children who are not in international schools mm. it is very difficult for them to get that work and some of them their parents don't have that money of paying the for tv mm. or even the internet the internet mm. so it is very difficult but remember the international t- students or children on. are still going on mm. with their studies okay. but these ones which are who are not in international schools mm. they are not they are not uh, they are not continuing with their studies mm. they are lagging behind so schools should open so that we can all of us be on on the same, same pace, pace. Yes. right that's beautiful that's beautiful if schools are to open they should be mindful of that mm. they should be mindful or if they are not to open uh, such material should be extended there are our friends who are in the villages yes. and you cannot expect someone to go deep down in the village or to have a mobile phone mm. to have access to the email some of them are very 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 far mm-hmm. on that note that's why we are saying they should open of course and if they are to open they will be helping not only those that are on a good level but even those that cannot access those that are quite vulnerable not everyone has access to the internet not everyone has access to tv not everyone can afford newspapers there was a time also they were speaking around here 
uh, in the newspapers, the writers were writing and saying they should extend, they should make sure they give each and everyone such newspapers for free. But of course, that has not gone countrywide. Yes. It cannot be done countrywide. Mm-hmm. Apparently, it might take some time. Mm-hmm. So that's why we advocate for uh, parents continuous teaching during such a time. Mm-hmm. They should continue to teach people. And another thing is, if they are to open schools, yeah. as I say that, mm. they should open and they make sure that they provide all the requirements at school mm. and they should keep that distance in classes mm. so that these children, they don't get that disease of COVID-19. Wow, that's beautiful. They have to maintain space. Mm. On that note, that being said, it is quite hard. Education is going to become hard. Mm. If you look at a school where they have a structure and that structure has been accommodating two streams for a class, mm. let me say senior one, there is senior one blue and there is senior one green. Mm. Right now we need more classes like four of them for senior one so that we make sure there is a meter we make sure one person is not close to another social distancing that means education was, will, will turn out expensive because they need more structures to have more space in the schools which is quite tasking and also you find that there are other schools where all the, the those schools that are deep down in the villages where where they cannot afford masks for everyone for instance, they are deep in my village, where you find a village that is uh, people people love to make fun and say it's the last one. It's the last in that very that very town or village, the, the a village that is at the extreme end. So you find that it's not even easy for them to afford shoes every day. Yeah. There are children who go to school barefoot. Of course, there are others that are somehow urbanized. It's a village, but um, there is still some um, modernization. But where I come from and deep beyond there, you find that they cannot even afford shoes or bag. Right now, you're telling them, have a mask. You're telling them buy sanitizers. That becomes expensive. That's why even as we ponder and we say schools should open, we are still mindful of other things that might be hard in the in the process. Even if we say they should open and provide all these SOPs, they should open and do this and do this, maintain social distancing. Still, it is tricky and hard. On that course, we go on the other side of the debate and we say schools should not open. Yes. Let's get to know why. Let's get to know because these are biting things that people are going through. Others are saying schools should open. Others are saying schools should not open. So straight away to Maria, let's get to hear from you again. Schools should not open. Why is it that people are saying that? Or why do you think if schools do not open, this might happen? What are that? What, what is that other side of the story? According to me, yeah. as I first said that schools should open, I'm on both sides. And another side mm. is schools should not open yeah. because some children are careless. They yeah. can't manage to go at school during this time of COVID-19. Some children. Some children. Good. Because mm. not all of them, mm. but they are careless. Because you can find where we pass. There are different roads always where we pass when we are coming at school. Mm. So you don't know whether this child went at the shop to buy something mm. for eating as you know some children in the morning they buy it yeah. they don't want to pack for them now mm. when they reach at the gate no temperature gun even if when it's there mm. but when it enters the school they, they didn't wash their hands yeah. now reaches goes in the toilet mm. now that's another problem because we find that virus on surfaces yes. so if it goes in the toilet touches on the hand of the handles donuts, of the, yes. yeah, mm-hmm. handles of the doors. Mm-hmm. Now you can find that the disease, if she had or he had a mm-hmm. disease, it can remain there. Mm-hmm. So some children they can't mind. Even if you find others when they are careful, mm-hmm. also can go in the toilet and touches on the same surface where mm-hmm. the other person had touched. touched. Now yeah. that's another problem and has friends that mm. person so we'll go back they converse they read books together yeah. and it will be spreading t- from one place to another or from one person to another yeah continue please and another thing is that schools should not open because now during this time of lockdown as the president came out and locked many things say that they should wait now parents are not working now no money for school fees now two parents some of them are saying schools should not open because we don't have money mm. we have had many people coming out saying we don't have food our children they're about to die of hunger loans mm. rents now yeah. you find many difficulties now parents are saying if they open now 
schools what should be the next where because, will they get the money from yeah, for because what if they are lacking food during this time when they locked many things mm -hmm. now money for school fees when they we have been in lockdown for yeah. now four months where mm -hmm. will they get money for school fees that's good that is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. There are people who are wondering, of course, remember, parent is coming from a lockdown. They have not been working. Yes. Some of them right now are open. They are those essential workers. That's how they categorize them for us. Then there are those that are under non-essential. Mm -hmm. Those ones are not working. They are not attaining money from anywhere. So you cannot tell me that you're going to send Maria. Let me say you have three children. All of them, you're going to send them to school. And you have to pay like about 700000 for each and every one of them. Only two, it's 1.4. Can you afford to be paying uh, for those two then also you have bills at home? Remember, I've not been working. Yes. So it's quite tight. It's quite tight. Mm -hmm. So that is why on that note, remember it's a debate that we are holding and we are saying school, should schools open or should they not open? If they are to open, there is of course precaution. There are things that we must be mindful of and there are things that we must follow. Mm -hmm. And then on the other note, we are saying they should not open. Why? There are some children who are careless. Not all of them can put up with what you are saying. Even if you give me a mask, you might find that I'm not so careful. At some point, I'll remove it and I also sneeze. Remember, all those droplets that are going on the surfaces uh, they, uh, they are making it easy for someone to come and attach the disease and carry it they expose the whole environment mm -hmm. to such so we cannot say that they should open and we zero down on to that so there are people who are a bit careless they won't be so mindful talk about the distancing it's not all easy mm -hmm. and there is no money we are coming from a lockdown and again you must get fees so it's quite tight. Yes, Maria, you can please carry on if there is still something you still want to debate on. Yeah, I want uh, the last one. I want to talk about that schools should not open mm -hmm. because now as teachers, we have seen them coming out when they are saying that the president should open. Mm -hmm. Now also them, they need money. Yeah. There are many demands which they have to fulfill. Yeah. Now if they start teaching children, some teachers, mm -hmm. others even who are not parents, they will not mind about the children. Mm. They will just do their work of teaching their job so that they finish, they pay them their salaries during this time as they are lacking yeah. many things. Yeah. So for them, others, they will not mind. They will say we have to teach, we fulfill all the money mm. which we have not been getting during these four months. So uh, that's another bad side of that we should not open schools okay thank you so much maria that is uh maria in the house and that is a perception that is all coming from the brain of course her idea that is what she thinks and yes it's the youth perspective the teenagers perspective where we get to share our thoughts and today we are talking an interesting thing we are talking about the fact that schools should open or they should not why it's a debate. It's uh, two-sided. We are seeing both sides of the coin and we first saw why they should open. They are uh, pregnancy rates that are increasing day by day. They are the teenagers, the children. They are idle. They are people who don't have access to internet to study over the internet like others. It is tight. Children are going through frustration, pain. Others are going through, uh, they, they are going through a st some kind of stress. Remember, in schools, there is sexual, reproductive, health rights, education. They are not receiving it. There are many things. And now we are talking the other side of the coin. And straight away, with that said, I'm going to Maria. Yes, sorry, I'm going to Joan. Joan, please take us away. Um, I'm saying that schools should not open, yeah. but the government should provide study materials to all children, mm. especially those ones in the villages, yeah. because it is very difficult for them to get access to TVs, yeah. to those study materials. Smartphones. Yes, it's very difficult for them. Mm. Even though some of them, they have smartphones, mm. but it is difficult for them to get that money for internet. Yeah. So schools should, op should not open, open, but... The government should work hard so to see that all the cho mm. the children in the the country mm. they get access to those study materials. There was a time they were saying they are going to give out radios, mm. but I don't know where it ended. Mm. Did you people hear of that yes. to give out radios? Because there are people who are being taught by use of the radio. Mm. All you do is sit home, tune in your radio station, and you get to know. Mm. At this time, we are going to do mathematics, but they still that feel and touch yeah. that misses. You know, there is yes. something about a teacher being in class and teaching you mm. and also you listening to a yes. teacher. 
through the the media mm. through the radio remember you're not even seeing him like yeah, on tv yeah. but i don't know where that idea ended but with that said we hope for the best yes mm. another thing is schools mm. they should not open but because it is going to be very expensive now yeah, yeah. because parents are not working remember these teachers they will need to be paid they have to buy food for the children mm. at school yeah. it will be expensive for them because we are going in four months mm. without working yeah. so it will be very expensive if they open these schools yeah. i said that the schools should not open they wait mm. they prepare this time I, i think until next year okay. when they are well prepared so that now they they can open the schools mm. when at least they have something to start they from. should wait until maybe yes, next year because yes. we are not certain if the the virus is going to go off totally when we wake up one morning but of course we are praying and believing in god for a miracle mm -hmm. but they should at least hold on and wait like she said education is going to be expensive remember we talked about structures mm -hmm. you need more classrooms mm -hmm. so that you maintain social distancing mm -hmm. you must be buying and filling sanitizers hand washes all those things mm -hmm. masks are supposed to be there if mm -hmm. the school is to provide At the end of the day, you find that uh, your school fees has been hiked. Yes. If you are paying five hundred thousand today, you must include in some other fee, mm. simply because the school is also giving you extra. And you need to construct. Mm. If at all you had just a block, you need blocks now, because senior two, you must have four streams or even six. Mm. My last point yeah. is, if school a uh, school should not open, yeah. because if we say that all children, all all children and teachers, let mm. them stay at school. You are not very sure of whether these children mm. they will not be contact because even if you are you are in, in the house yeah. but you remember there are going to be very many in the room you are not very sure oh this one is very careful mm -hmm. or this one is not so schools should wait because even it is very expensive to some parents mm -hmm. you want your child to be in there but because of the disease which is in the country the government says all children in boarding, in boarding. and they some, should sleep at school yes, and some children they have some diseases that they should live with their parents yeah, all the time yeah. so it would be very difficult mm. for them to be in boarding so schools should wait to open because mm, the safe thing right now to do is to say uh, the government has declared boarding section for all schools regardless yes. of whether you're in primary or you're in secondary maria can you manage boarding school Yeah, I can manage. Are you sure you live without seeing your parents on a daily basis? Yeah, because of studies and I know what I want in the future, I can. Okay, that's beautiful. So if they come out and declare boarding, remember boarding is expensive mm. because you get extra meals. You have breakfast, mm. you have lunch and you have supper. But if you're doing day, you are commuting from home to school, you will only maybe do breakfast and lunch, but boarding is expensive. Yes. All of that will still get down to education will be expensive and you cannot say boarding is for all there are people who are who best study when they come back home simply because some of them are prone to diseases mm. sometimes they need to be coming back home not all of them of course so it's quite tight and it's it's it is really really hard we cannot come up with a, a conclusion and say this or that so we are just hoping one day everything is done and we know it's going to be just like that on that with that said and done it has been the youth perspective joe and maria rachel yeah we have been talking to you people you have been hearing from us remember to continue liking our our programs follow us by the use of our social media handles we have been talking a debate we have been having a debate in the house school uh, should schools open or they should not and if they are to open what must they be mindful of and if they are told they don't open Open. uh this is what it means that is what we have been looking at an increase in pregnancy rates an increase in uh, teenagers and uh, students being idle of which all of that has impacts yes it has been beautiful having them here thank you all so much for sharing your perception god bless you all